What's up everyone, Darty V here, my video talking about my amazing experience with Alatrion and asking people to be open-minded about Fatalis' fight has gotten so much attention and I have you all to thank for that. Thank you so much for watching and sharing your opinions and ideas in the comments. It means the world to me with how small my channel is. Today I'm going to be sharing the best strategy that I currently know of for defeating Fatalis. I worked on and used this strategy with my friend Caleb and he was my partner in beating Alatron for the first time. So we've gotten some experience working together, taking down Black Dragons before. I'm not saying this is the only way to win, but in my experience, it is the most consistent and easy to pull off. And it's a combination of my experience and Caleb's experience in the hunt, as well as things that we've learned from other hunters on Reddit and YouTube. After some experimentation and practice, we were able to kill him in about 24 minutes using the strategy that I'm about to share with you on our third attempt, and have gotten more kills since as we have learned and grown in our knowledge of the fight. Keep in mind that this technique doesn't make Fatalis an easy fight by any means. He's still a walking apocalypse that is absolutely unforgiving of any mistakes, but using these strategies should help you get a lot closer to victory. Be aware that any mistake in the Fatalis fight can rapidly spiral downhill into a cart, and go easy on yourself if you mess up. Even after initially beating him, Caleb and I still struggled a lot before we were able to really master the fight to the point where we can beat Fatalis consistently. In other words, don't think that beating him once means he's going to be easy from that point forward. I definitely recommend fighting Fatalis with two people, and so for the majority of this guide, assume that I'm talking about fighting him in the context of two people and two Palicos. These strategies also apply to solo and four-person hunts with some modifications to fit the situation, though. So throughout the fight, it's best that each of you fill one of two roles. I know that a lot of you guys are probably disappointed that specific roles need to be filled, but this is the best way to take it down in our experience, and the goal of this guide is to give you the information you need to win effectively and easily. And so, one of you is going to be as close to Fatalis as possible at all times, dealing weapon damage while also prioritizing staying alive, and I'll be referring to this hunter as the Challenger during the course of this guide. The other will prioritize effectively using the cannons and ballistae in the arena, but will also need to engage Fatalis with their weapon, and so I'll be referring to that person as the bomber. Both of you will need to work together to be successful. First, let's do a quick overview of the progression of the fight for those of you who have never gotten into it before and are watching this as kind of an introduction. The first time you fight Fatalis, you'll be alongside the excitable A-lister, and you'll have to deal enough damage to Fatalis' chest to cause it to flinch, which will then lead to the A-lister binding the monster and giving you a chance to deal more damage. Once you reach a specific damage threshold, Fatalis will take to the sky, and a cutscene will be triggered in which Fatalis will unleash a devastating fire attack. The A-lister pulls out after this cutscene, but you unlock the ability to use the SOS flare and play the quest with other hunters at this point. However, take note that should you leave or fail, future hunts will have you start all over again. You will once again need to deal enough damage to Fatalis to cause him to unleash the fire attack. To avoid this attack, run into the scrap metal plate located to the right side of the arena that you used during the cutscene, and stay there until it melts away completely. At this point, you are back where you were after the cutscene in your first hunt, and you gain access to more of the arena and more siege weapons than you had initially. Keep dealing enough damage, and Fatalis will enter his final phase. He will once again unleash the fire, but this time, you have to run up above the Dragonator and activate a barricade to shield you. The flames will destroy the barricade, so do not attempt to use this again. At this point, Fatalis will begin glowing, and his fire attacks will become significantly more powerful, aggressive, and difficult to avoid unless you have broken his head. Once you enter the final phase, the Dragonator cooldown begins as well. At various points throughout the final phase, Fatalis will once again unleash the full power of its fire, but you can't avoid it by running out of the blast area, which I'll explain later. Keep the pressure on, don't cart, fully break the head, use the Dragonator, and you'll have a successful hunt. Of course, all of this is much easier said than done, so let's get into the meat and the details. There isn't a definitive build that you need to be running to make this fight work, but I do have some recommendations for skills that all players should have. The first is Health Boost 3. Without it, you're going to get one shot by almost everything in the first phase, and it's only going to get worse from there. Next up is Part Breaker 3, which is going to make breaking his head and consequently reducing his damage in the final phase dramatically easier. These two skills are really the only ones that I would say are must-haves for everyone. I highly recommend one level of French Free, so you can bash on Fatalis' head freely alongside your team when he's down. Any weapon with a shield will benefit from Guard Up, which enables them to block the AoE Cone of Fire attack, and even shield their teammates from it. Wide Range is always beneficial to teams in fights like these as well, and a free meal will give you a lot more healing items over the course of the entire battle. 
A lot of people really like having high levels of Divine Blessing, but since this is inherently dependent on RNG, I personally don't like to depend on it with Fatalis, as I can't guarantee it will always work. Another skill that will come massively in handy is the new Clutch Claw Boost, which can be obtained from the newly meldable Shaver Jewel 3 or the Shaver Charm. I'll explain why this is great later, but if you can meld the jewel and fit it into your build, even if it's only on a long-lasting mantle like the glider, it can make a world of difference for you if you run a weapon that doesn't normally weaken with only one attack. Keep in mind, though, that slinger ammo drops from clutch claw attacks for the entire party are limited, and go on cooldown after you've extracted them from a fatalis a certain number of times. Um, this is around 4 or 5, I'm not sure exactly which, before the cooldown starts. So the, But the point of that is that not everyone in the party needs to run clutch claw boost. For the challenger role, which is what I play in all the footage that I'm using in this video, Evade Window 5 is going to be a tremendous asset in keeping yourself close to Fatalis while also being able to stay safe. Even after fighting him and getting to the final phase over 20 times, I still have a hard time getting the timing for dodges on all his attacks, and this skill takes a lot of the stress out. From my observations, it seems like the iframes start at about the same position in the roll as by default, but they last until almost the end of the roll, rather than only having that small part in the middle where you're invulnerable. If any of you guys know exactly where the iframes in Monster Hunter start and end, please share this information in the comments and I will pin your comment if it seems better than the information I've given. If you're comfortable with taking a lot of aggro from Fatalis, it can also be really good to eat for Feline Provoker or actually run the Provoker skill if you have the space in your build and are comfortable doing so in order to keep Fatalis' attention away from the bomber as much as possible. Other than that, just make sure you have a build where you can stay alive and deal good damage. I fill this role extremely naturally as a Switch Axe main because being able to use zero sum discharge lets me deal extreme damage to Fatalis' head on a regular basis. If you're using Switch Axe, Power Prolonger and Focus are both extremely helpful. If you can only have one, get Power Prolonger and prioritize using sword moves that give a lot of charge. The Bomber has a bit more specialized skills in their kit. The number one skill for the Bomber is definitely Heavy Artillery 2, which doubles the damage output of all siege weapons in the arena when used by the Bomber, except for the Dragonator itself. The role that the Bomber plays is so critical because Fatalis is completely immune to conventional stuns and trips, making Siege Weaponry the best way to knock it down and take advantage of massive damage windows in the head. Every single shot fired from any cannon or ballista counts. The total damage that can be dealt from Siege Weaponry, not including the Dragonator when using Heavy Artillery, exceeds 25,000, and that's not including the free damage that you will be able to deal from knocking Fatalis down with that equipment. Other than Heavy Artillery, there really aren't any other role-specific skills for the Bomber, but they should be almost or equally capable of dealing damage with their actual weapon as the Challenger. Don't forget about your Palicos. They can be great for building up status effects throughout the fight, like Paralysis, which is what Caleb and I have found to be most useful. They can be used for Sleep too, but generally you'll only get one of each status inflicted per fight, and there is a better use for Sleep if you're interested in using it that I'll discuss later. As for gadgets, I really like to run Coral Orchestra on my cat for the various buffs, which can include defense, earplugs, and stun resistance. Sometimes you'll get an attack or divine blessing thrown in there. Caleb used Plunderblade in my recorded footage to harvest material since we fail so often. But I would honestly say that either Vigor Wasp Spray, another Coral Orchestra, or Shield Spire is probably the best play if your goal is to actually kill Fatalis on every run. Since I recorded this footage, Caleb has since switched to Shield Spire, because he can direct Fatalis' aggro away from himself and onto his Palico when he's trying to use Ballista and Cannons. Keep in mind that you still must always be careful, because Fatalis can switch targets extremely quickly. I always recommend having a Far Caster and Max Potions, plus crafting ingredients for Max Potions for this fight. Both of these items should be on your radial menu, so you can use them as quickly as possible if an emergency should arise during the hunt. If you don't know how to use the radio menu, search it up. It's hugely helpful. Now, onto the actual fight itself and how you're going to go about fighting the beast. Caleb and I have found the most effective way to start the fight is with both the Challenger and the Bomber using a build that has Heavy Artillery 2 built in. While still in the starting camp, both of you need to equip your ghillie mantle. Have two Mega Barrel Bombs, a combat-friendly mantle of your choice such as Rocksteady, Temporal, or Evasion, and a Farcaster in your inventory. Once you're both ready to go, take the hitching post into the arena. Pick up stone for your slinger and place your barrel bombs on the ground, looking towards Fatalis from the cannon on the right. Now, run to the cannons and fully load each. Aim the cannon on the right so that it will directly hit Fatalis where he is currently standing. Aim the left cannon several turns to the right. This one is going to be fired at Fatalis after he finishes charging at the first cannon. Verify that the angles line up as we show in this video more or less. 
One player will now need to count off to the other. When the count is up, each of you need to put your mantles on simultaneously, and one needs to fire the right cannon. As Fatala starts charging towards you, the other needs to run to the other cannon and begin the firing process once Fatalis reaches the area of the wall with the first. Ideally, you should hit all 10 cannonballs, but not all of them need to hit to knock Fatalis down. As he falls down, one of you needs to tenderize his head while the other positions themselves to deal as much damage to it as possible during the knockdown. If you're running Switch Axe specifically, I recommend that you stay on the ground and allow your teammate to do the tenderizing so you can build up sword power and get a zero-sum discharge off as Fatalis gets up. As he gets up, one of you can clutch claw on and flinch shot Fatalis into the cannons, which will destroy one of them, but is worth doing as they are destroyed easily anyways, and they are burned up in the first flame nova. If you're using Rock Steady Mantle with the Switch Axe, the following roar as Fatalis enrages is another free zero-sum discharge window on the head. However, bringing Temporal for this phase will allow you to spam zero-sum discharge after the enrage continuously in total safety, that is, until the mantle runs out. The only reason I'm using Evasion in this footage is because of how I wanted my build set up, as I haven't bothered getting Rocksteady or Temporal Plus just yet, but um, if I had Rocksteady or Temporal Mantle Plus, I'd definitely be using those. Continue fighting until your combat mantles wear off, then both Farcaster back to camp and put on your regular builds for the rest of the fight. As far as mantles go, I highly recommend using Fireproof, as it has a very long uptime, relatively quick cooldown, and allows you to take a lot less damage from breath attacks especially in final phase. It is worth noting that Fatalis is somewhat like Elatrion when enraged. While Elatrion takes 20% more damage when in rage mode while also dealing out 20% more, Fatalis takes only 10% more damage and deals 10% more. Thus, it isn't quite as beneficial to use claw attacks just to enrage him quickly without using a wall knock, unless you're a speedrunner running max agitator and other damage skills, in which case, why are you even watching this video? <laughs> If any player is running Clutch Claw Boost or a weapon that drops Slinger Ammo, Fatalis will only drop Dragon Pods. Pick these up. If at any time you need to flinch Fatalis for a moment to stop an attack or create a window, 2-3 to three Dragon Pods is usually enough. He doesn't seem to build much of any resistance to them, but there are certain attacks and animations that don't seem to be flinchable, such as the one where he charges with his face literally tearing up the ground. Generally, it's good to shoot Fatalis with one Slinger Pod after each flinch, so only one pod is required to flinch it the next time. As I said before, be aware that eventually a cooldown on extracting Slinger ammo starts, so be sparing with your pods, and if you can, swap to stone before going for a wall knock before picking up your Dragon Pods once it's over. Also be mindful of any time that Fatalis is near a ledge that you can use to get aerial attacks. Successfully mounting Fatalis results in a long knockdown period and is absolutely worth getting. It is worth noting that Fatalis is similar to a Brute Wyverns like Devil Show, and that he has some moves that will rapidly drain your stamina if you do not brace. Learn when he is just wiggling around and it's safe to jump to a different part, and learn when he's going to try and charge and you need to brace, or you will fail your mount and miss out on huge damage. The chances of you getting a second mount are extremely low, as Fatalis' mount threshold increases significantly, so try not to mess it up. It's best for the challenger to get the mount because almost all of Fatalis' movements when mounted can deal damage, meaning the best way to keep up DPS during a mount is for the gunner to use nearby Ballistae, but this is not a requirement. For the remainder of Fatalis' first phase, nothing too dramatic happens unless you overextend and faint. Close cooperation is required to keep each other alive, especially when Fatalis uses the AoE Cone of Fire. If you're the bomber, be sure to use the regular ammunition for the Ballista when Fatalis is not paying attention to you. It can also be super helpful to use the Temporal Mantle while on the regular Ballista, as Fatalis will be unable to hit you with impact attacks and you cannot be knocked off the Ballista. Where you choose to shoot depends on your main priority. If you're trying to farm the wings, you can try to break those, but the head is your best bet if you want to knock Fatalis down and be that much closer to killing it. Not to mention the head break being extremely important for the final phase. Regular Ballista ammo will eventually respawn, so check periodically if you can do so safely. Once you reach the end of the first phase, Fatalis will begin to charge his fire, and you need to run to the cover located on the right side of the arena. This is the one that you hit in during the cutscene with the A-lister. You can survive the initial wave of fire as long as you have the health to take the chip damage, but once Fatalis unleashes the full blast, you will die instantly, kind of like Behemoth's Ecliptic Meteor or Safi Jiva's Sapphire of the Emperor. Also be mindful of Fire Blight if you don't have Blight Resistance, as this can kill you if you're already low on health when you get out of the flames. Fatalis will begin the next phase flying in the air. The challenger should take advantage of the long sweeping fire attacks to get wounds on the chest and legs, or even head, while the bomber uses the roaming ballista to deal maximum damage to Fatalis. 
If the challenger is using Switch Axe and still has Sword Charge, they can clutch the Fatalis' head and zero, chum, zero Sum Discharge safely anytime Fatalis is using a continuous beam style breath attack. Hitting a softened chest with the roaming ballista's full amount of ammo can deal over 7,000 damage with Heavy Artillery 2 in this phase. If you feel capable of getting a softened on the head and the bomber is confident in their aim, you can also go for that and use the roaming ballista there instead, which will get you significantly closer to breaking the head. This is what Caleb and I prefer to do, before all else, as breaking the head twice will give you a guaranteed evil eye even if you fail the quest, and breaking the head quickly also makes the fight way easier to survive in general. Be sure to use all of the roaming ballista ammo, and to do so as soon as possible, as it will recharge before the end of the fight. As the challenger, be mindful of the bomber on the ballista, as they will knock you around if you run into their path while they are moving. If you haven't already used it on the stationary ballista, the temporal mantle can be very helpful for the bomber while on the roaming ballista, as this enables you to stay mounted without taking any damage from Fatalis while the mantle duration is up. The faster you deal damage to it while in the air, the faster Fatalis will land and you can resume fighting him as before. If you're playing solo or would like Fatalis to get out of the air as quickly as possible, you can drop smoke bombs on the roaming ballista to make Fatalis land and hold still for a little while as long as he can't see anyone. Other than the new aerial attacks, Fatalis does not change much from a combat perspective in this phase. There is another cannon that can be used at this time by the bomber at the back right, and another standard ballista on the far left. Be absolutely sure that all the shots will hit Fatalis before firing the cannon. Both the damage and the knockdown buildup are key. The second knockdown from Siege Gear should come either during this phase or early in the next one, depending on how well the bomber has been using the standard ballista and the cannon. Throughout the second phase, try to stay relatively close to the area of the arena near the Dragonator, because when Fatalis re readies his Flame Blast this time, you need to use the barricade. Once everyone is in, pull the lever to seal the door. If you close the door before everyone is in, anyone outside is toast. But if you don't get it in time, everyone is, so be sure you know the timing. If you are one of the first inside, you can ready the lever by holding down the Use button. Once everyone is inside, just release, and you'll close the barricade slightly faster than if you waited to start pulling it until everyone got inside. Once the barricade is gone, and everyone is full health again, run out and prepare for the final phase. At the start, Fatalis will emit a non-damaging surge of energy and light, and its chest will begin to glow, signifying that he has entered a powered-up state. His chest will take additional damage in this mode. If you have not already broken the head at least once by this point, this needs to become your top priority other than staying alive, because his breath attacks will almost all one-shot you if he is at full strength. Even with a single head break, he is absolutely capable of still getting one-shots with most breath attacks, so be very careful. This is the best time to use the one-shot binders for the Ballistae, as they will hold Fatalis in place and keep his head relatively in the same area, giving you additional chances to break it if you haven't already. There are two boxes of binders, one on each side of the arena. Also, the roaming Ballista should reload itself at some point during this phase. If the head is still not broken by this point, the bomber should prioritize breaking it over all else while on the roaming ballista. If the head has been broken twice, focus on the chest while using the roaming ballista. If weakened, this can deal 9000 damage while also knocking Fatalis out of the air, depending on your siege weapon stun buildup. Fatalis also gains some new moves during this phase, including a deadly 360 degree fire spin that is responsible for almost all of my personal feints during final phase. This spin can be interrupted with Dragon Pods or dodged through if you have enough Evade Window, but it is still extremely hard to avoid. You can avoid the blast by continuously hugging the area between his front and rear legs on the side of his body opposite to the head when he's winding up for the attack. But if you don't know exactly where to go, this is much riskier than a Superman dive or just using Dragon Pods, especially if you haven't broken the head at all. You can also clutch onto the head after he begins shooting fire, since this is a beam attack, but this beam attack is unique in that if you're clutched on before he actually begins breathing fire, you will be hit off and probably killed if you haven't broken the head, so don't try this without knowing the timing of the attack. While in this phase, Fatalis also gains access to a devastating pin attack, which can and should be interrupted by dragon pods should anyone become caught in it. Throughout this final phase, Fatalis will unleash his full fire at least twice in our experience. This time, to avoid it, you must run across the arena towards Fatalis' position to avoid being caught in the blast. It is best to run diagonally because this attack comes out in a cone shape, so you can get out of the area of effect more quickly. As the general said in the cutscene, the Dragonator is the ace in the hole here. Its countdown timer begins after you enter third phase, and the wait seems to be pretty similar to the one in the special arena, around 5 minutes or so. Caleb and I didn't think of doing this because neither of us uses ranged weapons often. 
but I learned from Eric's gaming that you can far cast her back to camp, grab a ranged weapon if you're comfortable, and put Fatalis to sleep in front of the Dragon Eater. When you trigger the device, one of the two harpoons will deal double the damage since it is a wake-up hit. The Dragon Eater already takes out almost 10% of Fatalis' health with two players, this will bring it up to nearly 15%. If you're struggling to deal enough damage, this could be game-changing for you. After triggering the Dragonator, just stay on your toes and keep damaging Fatalis. Let the Bomber check and see if Cannon and Ballista ammo has respawned for the extra damage and knockdown chance, and keep each other alive. Always have Dragon Pods at the ready, don't lock yourself into a combo, and don't get greedy like I do in basically all the footage that I have of the final phase. If you can keep up your damage and not faint, Fatalis will fall, and you will have slain the Destroyer of Strayed. Now that we've gone through the different phases in detail, and how you should approach each one, I'll share a couple more tips that I've learned from my kills, and all the attempts that I've had. First of all, Fatal spends its time alternating between flying, standing on two legs, and using all four of its legs. When Fatalis is flying, performing a flinch shot will only cause it to land and take minor damage. When standing on its hind legs, flinch shotting the head will only cause it to drop down to four legs, and once again will only deal minor damage. Only when Fatalis is on all four legs can it be flinch shotted into walls for high damage. I also recommend having the head softened when you do these flinch shots for bonus head break damage. In general, it seems like Fatalis will run a little farther than half the width of the arena when flinch shotted. When Fatalis uses the regular AoE cone of fire, you can hide behind the rock pillars on the map, but these are inconsistent at best for blocking any of its other attacks, so prioritize dodging and good positioning over using them. Also, while the cone attack can be interrupted by dragon pods if someone is in danger, in the event that everyone is safe, it is much better to take advantage of the time that Fatalis spends immobile to damage the head and or chest. Switch Axe users can hit the head three times while he is blasting, and then go into a zero-sum discharge, as long as they start hitting the head almost as soon as he goes into the attack. Just be aware that when the attack ends, an explosive pool is left on the ground near the head, so get away or clutch claw into the head just a little before Fatalis stops breathing fire. In general, Fatalis is not very easy to lure, and seems to prefer staying in one spot sniping you with fireballs over chasing you down, so keep that in mind, and if he moves into a position where you can work on the mount threshold or hit him easily with cannons or ballistae, punish him as hard as you can while you can. You can manipulate his position with dragon pods as well. After seeing it a couple of times, you can easily recognize when Fatalis is going to move from standing up to four legs. Make sure you can dodge through this attack or are far away, as it will make you prone and very exposed to damage if you are hit by the attack or are grappled onto Fatalis as he falls. As far as just generally good damage windows go, anytime Fatalis is shooting fireballs at the bomber is prime time for the challenger to go crazy on its chest. It usually fires three, but sometimes will shoot only one or even six or so in a row, so be sure to pay attention. Also, while Fatalis' stomach is sometimes a safe spot to attack, Fatalis has various attacks that it shoots either directly down between its legs or slightly in front of it that will hit you and can kill you, so reposition yourself constantly and don't get too comfortable unless you're absolutely sure you know what's going to do and are confident in your ability to avoid the moves. The fire breath attack on all fours that Fatalis has had since the 4th gen games is also a generally great damage window since it's a beam attack. You can either attack the chest or clutch claw to the head and soften, get a zero sum discharge, or flinch shot. This is the easiest of the beam attacks to get onto the head during due to how low the head is during it, so don't sleep on opportunities to punish him for using it. Also, don't hesitate to use your Farcaster to go back to camp and resupply or change mantles if you feel the need. You'll deal more damage in the long term if you have maximum resources at your disposal and avoid carting. A lot of you are probably disappointed with the amount of coordination and role, pl and role filling that the strategy requires between the players in the hunt. If you feel like you don't have anyone to do this with, please be aware that there are multiple places on Reddit where you can look for people to play with, and there's also a Monster Hunter World Discord server with thousands of players online at any given time. You don't need a microphone to use this strategy or to complete this fight. It is very possible without one as long as you're both paying attention to each other and are on the same page about what you're doing. However, being able to communicate via voice helps a lot. And that wraps up this guide. I hope you learned a whole lot about how you can do a better job of fighting Fatalis, and if you haven't gotten your first kill yet, best of luck to you. I've really enjoyed getting to learn his fight and his moveset, and do a better and better job of hunting him every single time I go in. Best of luck to you all, and may the Sapphire Star light your way to victory at Shrade. I'm so far away, the trick and punch right now.
No, 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 we need to control what's going to 